hey, hello. No, I don't like that. Hang on. <clears throat> <laughs> it's, I, I think it's too it. late. <laughs> Dang it. Hello, everyone. Uh, hi. <laughs> hi. Crap. Uh, I mean, hello. Welcome to the Vortex. <laughs> you got you to... Gotta... <laughs> You gotta stick with it, man. <laughs> yeah. Commit. You, you Commit made your bed, bed, now you gotta lie in it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hello, all the fans out there. This is Voices from the Vortex. I am one of the two dudes from Gallifrey. My name is Matt. And my name is Taylor. That's what it says in his underwear, so I'm gonna believe him. <laughs> hey, how Hello. do you know? <laughs> I, I put on the wrong pair of underwear the other day. It was oh. weird. <laughs> I wonder, do you th- do our fans think we live together in some... <laughs> <laughs> in the Vortex. In the Vortex. On the TARDIS. Yeah, some where kind of we're apartment. at. Come on. <laughs> oh. um, well, this week, uh, we're going to be talking about the Crimson Horror. Dun, dun, dun. Da, da, da. Um, real quick, uh, this, for me, this episode, my review is... Yeah, <laughs> that's my review. <laughs> okay, <laughs> what is it? Eh, out of five stars or something? Or yeah, I mean, really. Yeah, it's it's eh. <laughs> uh, Which is which is this is this is going to shock our viewers, our, our listeners, viewers. Uh, man, I am just not with it tonight, am I? This they, is going to shock watch the, the little. They could watch the little bar, you know, move across <laughs> as they. As is that they exciting listen. for you, people? <laughs> Would you like pictures? I, I don't know what to do. I don't know. I don't know. Um, <laughs> This this is going to shock those who know us and listen. Uh, but I loved this episode, and I I'm in complete and absolute contrast to you. I think this episode was top notch. Well, I will say it was. I mean, it, there were a lot of funny parts to it, and it, it you know it's it's Doctor Who, so it was still enjoyable. Mm-hmm. But for me, I would say this is the. <laughs> Probably the weakest of the season. Weakest of the season? Yeah. Ouch. That's what I have to say. I, I mean, I liked it, but compared to all the other episodes this season, I would say this is the this is the weak one. Do you <laughs> hate Mark Gatiss or something? Or No, I really don't. Puppy, or... <laughs> I like Mark Gatiss. <laughs> I just I just don't I didn't like this one as much Why? as the, like what about others. it? But what about it? Why, I mean, why didn't you like this one? Um, oh, okay. Well, uh, I'll have to say, um, well, first of all, we didn't see the doctor for like 20 minutes, <laughs> well, which, okay. which can be good sometimes. Sure. But there's, you know, there's episodes that in the past where it's been like, you've barely seen the doctor at all. Um, the exception of course is blink, but, mm-hmm. um, there, you know, those episodes don't seem to be fan favorites. Um, the other thing that really stood out to me in this episode too is it seemed to move at first it seemed to move very very slowly um, almost to, to the point it was like alright where are they going with this you know what's what's the thing what's the crimson horror let's get to it and then as soon as they as soon as they got to it like as soon as he like rescued Clara it like took off almost too fast and then it was like, and then it was over. And I was like, oh, okay. That was a very quick resolution to the, to the issue. Right. Um, so yeah, I just felt, it just kind of fell off. The pacing was, was off. It was kind of a, it was a weird, kind of a weird way to tell the story. You know, they had the whole part where it was like Jenny, like mm-hmm. for a really long time. And then, and then, it's, and then <clears throat> the doctor was there. And then he like went back and was like, oh, this is what ha- This is what's been going on for five days. I think it would have been maybe more enjoyable if we'd have seen seen it from the doctor's point of view, like once he gets there, and then of course that would have ruined the big shocker, which I did not see coming. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, and that's it's interesting you say it like that because you're the one who's the fan of the timey wimey episodes. You like the ones that don't play out linearly, and that you get to go back. Like at by the end, they're going back and kind of like filling in the gaps. This is yeah. This is true. Um, the one thing I, uh, well, I like those, but I like them in the fact where maybe it's something that's happening at the same time, and you know, then you, they, you go back and you go, oh, this was happening at the same time. At this point, it was just like, oh, let me catch you up on what's been going on. <laughs> 
well, I kind of felt gypped that we didn't get to see that part of the story as much. You know, mm-hmm. and we saw Jenny like sneaking around the factory for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, see, so, and that's. I guess those are uh, those are very good opinions. Um, definitely, definitely good views. I, I think you're wrong. Okay. Well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> good. You know, it's good. I, it's good. I have that position there. Um, no, I. You know, <clears throat> one of the things I'm noticing, especially this half of the season, now that we're with Clara, now that we're um, without the ponds, is that they're doing more mysteries um, and horror to to an extent. And one of the things I really like is that even the ones that aren't written by Moffat, you can tell where his hand has touched in a, a script. And I like He's very that handy. the first half. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, I like that the opening half is very slow. I do, because I like that it's building a mystery. I like suspense. If these episodes were just straight action, if it was just from moment one you kind of yeah you already were off and running as some of these episodes have been like journey to the center of the tardis like um yeah no (laughs) that Um, one well uh cold war sorry cold war cold war and uh and i would i would say bells of st john too even the bells of st john you're right they just they took off right away they're good stories. They're fun to, to, to watch and fun to experience. But And much like you said you didn't necessarily enjoy Hyde or this one, I feel like those two show a good example of let's take it slow at first, and once these two get into the groove, let them just take off. I think that's really kind of neat to see. I, I, I like that parallel. Every episode doesn't have to feel the same, and they definitely don't. Right. So I, yeah. I, I really appreciate from this one that, that we got that but I, I think a lot of people are looking at this one I think the season I really think it's suffering from what some of the other seasons have suffered from there's so many mysteries that need to be solved and yeah. there aren't enough episodes that deal with those mysteries well well here's another thing that really ticked me off was you get this whole thing you get Madame Vastra and Jenny and Strax are back, which is fantastic. I loved it. But in the same vein, you also have this thing where they're like, hold on a minute, Doctor. Clara, what are you talking about? Didn't she die? And all we get from the Doctor is, uh, it's complicated. <laughs> and I'm like, really? I mean, it was a, it was a great, op- it was a missed opportunity to go, to give a, give the audience maybe a little bit more of of something, but it, it, they didn't give us anything. Right. It was just, well, we don't know, you know. And it was like, ugh. I mean, give us a little bit. Of, I mean, we only have two episodes left. You, you could kind of give us a little right. hint or something. You know what I mean? But he, you know, he's done the same thing though with every mystery, every season. Uh, I, I started noticing this in season six with Matt Smith, where right after a good man goes to war, when we watched Let's Kill Hitler, suddenly the Doctor knew he was going to die. You know, he, he knew that information that he got from the test selector. So they asked him a question of like, what's going on? You know, and he just looks at them and then he just goes off and they kind of smile it off like, oh, that's the doctor. He doesn't tell us anything. But it's true. I mean, he he doesn't. And so you can't expect him to explain it to anyone, because once we get to the end of the season, he's going to go through whatever the logical conclusion is to. Right. What's been going on? Well, I feel like um, I feel like with these. The like, doctor se- lies to us. Yeah. Well, I feel like with these season-long mysteries that you know the, of the the whole season arc, um, what happens is they give us the mystery right at the beginning. You know, they say, mm. you know, something. Well, what they've done so far is they said, okay, well, there's Clara and she's showed up before. So what's the? That's the mystery. What's what? What is? You know, what's the deal? Right. And then what they'll do. Usually, I feel like this is what they do: is they kind of give us not necessarily hints towards what the, it's going to be, but they'll they'll give us like maybe a little bit more information, or which they they did a little bit where they said, "Okay, well, she's just normal," right? Um, and so that's like, but I feel like so far we don't know anything more than we than we knew at the beginning, <laughs> just a little frustrating. And I felt like this was a great opportunity to go into that because you had these characters who. Who also knew the mystery, mm-hmm. so it was like 
it, uh, that that part was also sort of to me it was a missed opportunity. I thought. And it, maybe it is. <clears throat> you know, I, we keep saying this this whole season so far. He's not really Moffat's not really giving us a lot to go with. Uh, we're just sort of having to take a lot of what he's saying and go, okay, you know, what? Um, why didn't he explain something here? Why isn't he giving us an explanation there? Why is it taking him so long just to let us know what the doctor is thinking, where he's at? You know, it's definitely not something we're used to because Russell T. Davies would give you all of that. Right. Well, like, it, like for example, um, you would get, like, let's say in season uh, three – you hear this like Mr. Saxon and it's just like you don't even think of it you're like okay whatever and then the more and more you keep hearing this name and you're like okay there's something there and then like later you like someone else will say something about Mr. Saxon but they'll give a little bit more information about him and you're like okay something mysterious about Mr. Saxon and, and then when you get to right. the end it's the big reveal I feel like here they're just like okay there's this mystery with Clara and then every time they, they sound like they're going to talk about it they don't <laughs> really and then, yeah, so then we really still don't know anything more. <laughs> well, and maybe maybe there is something. Maybe we don't realize that there's something bigger going on. We just don't notice it until the end. The one thing I will say about Clara is she's not very, um, like, hesitant about anything. Like, she is, like, she kind of questions things like companions usually do, but almost not as much. She's almost like, and especially, like, mm -hmm. in the fir her first episode... You know, she was like, he's like, uh, she goes, so you're an alien. And he's like, well, yeah, you're okay with that? She goes, yeah, I think so. You know, she's just like, nothing seems to phase her, really. Right. Yeah. Well, and yeah, maybe. So there may be something there, yeah. But that. that is very true. And I, I don't know if I told you this or not. The other day I was thinking about it. I don't think it is, but what if she was his future regeneration? That would be interesting. That'd be, I mean, right? Yeah, I mean that would be a huge thing. I, I don't know if I would like that. <laughs> right. But, uh, but that's, I mean, that would be. I would have to go back and watch and see the, some of the things she says. And, yeah, it would be, it would be because there's so much. You know, the whole, the whole, yeah. this whole, I don't know. This whole thing seems to be about, you know, imagining like picturing or, or, or visualizing um, there's so much there's just so much in this in this in this season about like look, look who the villain has been has been the great intelligence right you know and the great intelligence is a reflection uh-huh and then it becomes the, the, the like that the puppet becomes the master the dream becomes the dreamer yeah um, the idea that you know run you clever boy and remember uh -huh. he keeps remembering her he keeps investigating and searching for her and he's finding her yeah. so maybe he's creating her well that's a good that's a good thought I like I, yeah I like the fact that maybe it's like he's something that she that or she's something that he's created in his mind right and, uh, it's like almost like the perfect companion or something <laughs> right did you wish really hard <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think that's what the doctor would wish for. <laughs> no. Um, well, it's kind of a moot point since we're so far into it, but I'm gonna go ahead and recap it just real fast. You get this. There's uh, this Sweetville and Miss Gillyflower, and she's got this whole plan to basically. She's been preserving these people in the goo and the red poison, um, and then she wants to, and then she puts them in these glass jars, and she's gonna. She's gonna send this rocket up and sprinkle poison all over the earth. I get all over everywhere, I guess. And then she'll have these Adam and Eves. She called them that. Will, you right. know, start this new civilization. She's kind of a just a nut, a doomsday kind of nut. Mm -hmm. um, and she's got this help from this um, little parasite, uh, like on her chest, mm -hmm. that she calls Mister Sweet. Who he was kind of cute, I thought. <laughs> Oh, he was adorable at the end. Yeah, no, he, he turned around. He was like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> he was great until, you know, he exploded. <laughs> well, right. <laughs> Which, that was a little sad, but it was kind of hilarious at the same time. Um, <laughs> kind of? <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing. Yeah. So uh, the Doctor and Clara go to, um, to, to sort of investigate this. Um, 
and then they they sort of get it's it's the one time where like nothing works out for them and like right. the doctor gets like basically caught and he puts he gets put in the stuff and Clara gets preserved and she's put in a jar and and um you know it seems all is lost for them but luckily you know but we're seeing this in the opposite order obviously cuz we get this whole thing with Madame Vastra and Jenny and Strax and they go to the north and they go they go up there to um, mm-hmm. to sort of um, investigate this and Jenny goes in and she finds the doctor and the, the doctor's been being being held there as sort of a secret um, by the Miss Gillyflower's daughter Ada who's blind mm-hmm. sort of been keeping him now uh, I did not see that coming at all um I was thinking, gosh, we haven't seen the doctor in for it was just like twenty minutes till we actually right. saw him. And I thought, oh, he'll be. I thought, oh, maybe he'll be in that room, but I didn't. <laughs> I I almost saw it coming and didn't see it coming at the same time. Right. I thought, oh, she's going to open the door and maybe the doctor will be in there, but I didn't think, oh, the doctor's going to be the monster. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. That was that was a big that was a big twist. I actually I I really appreciated it. I liked it. You didn't, you didn't know what to expect then. You're like, wait, he's he's orange. What's gonna happen now? Yeah, yeah, that was I mean, really. At first, I thought maybe it was like a clone of him or something. Right. You know, like the, the, what the thing does, it makes like clones of people, and so then he was like a, one of the red clones, and she'd been mm-hmm. keeping him in there. But it I was actually him. I honestly wondered if this was gonna be Return of the Flash. Yeah, yeah, it seemed very flesh-like with the goo and. The, no. I, th- I thought it was a I thought it was a candy out of people type adventure before it started, so. <laughs> which it obviously wasn't. But. Sweetville, Sweetville, exactly. I'm telling you, um, people are made out of candy. Wait, no, candy's made out of people. <laughs> Sweetville candy is people. <laughs> Time lordy, delicious. Oh. <laughs> That's um, I will. The one thing I did like about this episode is there, there were lots of funny parts. Um, just definitely with Strax. I mean, like almost every word out of his mouth was hilarious. But oh, then also was, the humor was amazing. Oh yeah, but then also the fainting guy, like who f- kept fainting. Yeah, yeah, that cracked me up. By by the third time, I was he like, he was hilarious. Okay. Yeah, by the third time, I was like, okay, that's funny. <laughs> um. Oh, I mean, come on, all the little jokes. I, I know I've read a bunch of reviews of people who say, you know, oh, we absolutely hated, you know, the, the Tom Tom joke. Ah, that was great. Oh, my God. I didn't get it at first. It took me a second. But Thomas Thomas. Thomas Thomas. I think it was, it, it was almost, I, I could see how people would not, maybe not like it because it almost seemed out of place for for them to make a Tom Tom joke it, on Doctor it Who. Was, it was but, a huge pun. Like, obviously it was. Yeah. But it was it was still really funny. And I liked the kid. He was like, you'll reach your destination or whatever. Like, that was, I mean. That killed me. Yeah. At first I was like, that was kind of a weird thing. And then the second time I watched it, I go, oh, okay. Okay, I get it. <laughs> Thomas Thomas. <laughs> Thomas Thomas. Uh, I love Strax. I, yeah. I think, that, I think the reason that might be weird is because I know they have Tom Toms here in America, but I don't, I don't hear too much about them. I hear about like um, garments or right other GPSs. So I almost, that's almost why maybe I didn't get it at first. Because I think Tom Tom might be more popular over in England, maybe. Well, and it must be because you're right. Because it's not very. I mean, I've heard of Tom Tom. It's not right. like I haven't. Yeah, I've heard of it. It just yeah. But it's definitely something you don't hear a lot of here. No. Um, just that that whole scene there with with Thomas Thomas is funny. Like when uh, Strax is like, uh, he's like, "Horse, you failed me again." <laughs> Any last words before your eminent destruction? <laughs> poor, poor Strax. He didn't even get to like they they forced him to leave. Yeah. They're like, Go well, I did like the part he he came in after Jenny uh, like kind of kicked some butt. Then he comes in. He's like Santar Ha, and he runs in. He's like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, to hear Santar Ha again, I was like, yes. Uh, See some throwbacks to definitely. last couple of seasons. 
and then the and then the boner joke. Can we talk about the boner joke for just a second? No, but okay. Okay. <laughs> um, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Okay. This whole scene where Jenny takes off her 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 dress and she's got on this like tight leather outfit. This whole thing where the doctor's he's holding a screwdriver and it like slowly raises up and then he notices it and he like puts it down. Right. <laughs> you know, every so often. Not a fan, huh? Well, it, it was funny. Like, don't get me wrong, it was funny. But every so often, Doctor Who makes a joke where I go, "Really, you're going that? You're going blue <laughs> with that? <laughs> you know what I mean?" Uh, I, it just seems it seems out of place for Doctor Who to make a joke that obvious. You know what I mean? And yeah, that, and you know, yeah. yeah. I don't know. There's there's all sorts of things. Like uh, thinking about it, there's no. I don't feel like Doctor Who has a more sophisticated sense of humor. Sometimes it just doesn't. But I also, at the same time, I like to think that Doctor Who usually uses some sort of, like, highbrow kind of well witty humor. Right. You like to think that because it's it's a smart show. I mean, at the, there's a lot of... It's sci-fi, so, that, I mean, there's science in the name. So, it's I mean, it's... Right. You, you like to think that they have, they have some smart humor... Right, but this this episode was, I think, funnier than most. Yeah, there were a couple of bad jokes, but they weren't playing to every audience, or they weren't playing to one audience. They're playing to everybody. Right. Well, we did, we did have the we did have the joke in dinosaurs on a spaceship. Uh, on a spaceship. We did have the joke where they were like, "Do you have any vegeta- vegetative material in your pants or something?" He's like, "Just my balls." Right. <laughs> I mean, we had that joke, and it was like that. At, at the same vein, when he said that, I went, "Really, Doctor Who? <laughs> a balls joke? Okay, well, all right." <laughs> well, yeah. So, sometimes, you know, yeah. sometimes you need a poop joke. Sometimes, sometimes you need a ball yeah. Joke. Sometimes, I mean, sometimes it's a Santar Ha joke. <laughs> um, well, let me ask you this, Matt. Since you yeah. did love this episode, I did. What do you think? And I mean, okay, let's just assume. And I think it's safe to assume that the next episode is going to be so freaking awesome, and the finale is just going to be the best thing ever. Let's just right. assume. Okay. okay. Let's assume that. What would you say is the weakest episode this season? Uh, that's a good question. Um, because there has to, be, I mean, there has to be one that you think is. I mean, they can all be great, but one has to be not as good as the other one. <laughs> yeah. No, you're right. You're right. Um, that is a very good question because I, th- I feel like all the episodes so far have had huge strengths and some have had some huge weaknesses. You can even you can even draw from the first five episodes of this season too. Where really? I'm, this isn't strictly from you know this is from the Clara stuff. Yeah. Oof. I did not like the power of three. Okay, I'll give you that one. I feel out of the I feel out of the first five that was definitely the weakest of the. Well, there's I, of the first five. I'll tell you what: of the first five, the best that they did was Asylum of the Daleks. Yeah, I feel like that was one they had really been thinking about. They really wanted to do. It was just something like you it know, was Daleks. <laughs> yeah, it was meant to be. Yeah, I feel like the one with um, the gunslinger. I feel like that was a very similar thing. It was definitely, you know, an episode that they were all about. Um, they wanted to do for a while, so we, we, we kind of got that. But all the others, even dinosaurs on a spaceship, don't necessarily feel as fleshed out. Right. Even Angels Take Manhattan um, had a lot of flaws in it. A lot of huge gaping holes in logic that you kind of have to <laughs> overlook. And I go, okay, okay, so... Okay, you know. so let me... Speaking of that, let me share this thing with you. I didn't know if you saw it. It was online. It was really freaking funny. Uh, it was a... Um, it was a thing about Angels Take Manhattan, and it was like the doctor talking to the pawns, and he says something like... You know, had the te- it was like just pictures and text, and the text said something like, you know, one more trip to New York in 19-whatever, and... We and it'll rip time and space apart, and right, and it looked like it was making Rory say, "Well, can't we just like time travel to New Jersey in nineteen whatever, and then just take a cab to New York?" <laughs> so, right, 
it's well, just it's like it's... so could, all right did he really lose the pawns or was he just <laughs> well you know I mean? yeah <laughs> uh yeah okay yeah so if there are some huge clearing errors and a couple of uh you know a couple of the but, but we've talked about this it is the doctor sets sort of his own rules you know and he has to abide by what i guess he would consider to be his religion his right. standard and well, sometimes you just have to. Sometimes you just have to go with it. Like right. you have to just accept it. Like, okay, well, okay, Moffat, I, I'll, I'll I'll accept that as that's what happened. <laughs> right. Yeah, because he, he's not very Moffat's not very consistent sometimes with his explanations. Yeah. Um, you know, they're, they're, uh, trying to think of some really good examples now. Uh, Power of Three, the year-long invasion. It's a good example. Okay. So all these cubes were all over the Earth. So why didn't they just round them all up? They had a year. Yeah. Where'd the doctor go? Why didn't the doctor, you know, investigate the future? Why do you have to come back to then? Yeah. Why didn't he skip ahead six months to see what uh-huh. happened? Yeah, that would be, yeah. <laughs> you know? He could have come back and he was like, okay, guys. Or he could have had a unit, round them all up, put them all in the TARDIS. Right. I feel like, yeah, I feel like, um, I feel like with the power of three, the the one problem we had with it is it wasn't really a bad guy. I mean, there was, it was like the Shakri, but he, they weren't even there. Mm -hmm. You know, there was like kind of, it it wasn't even anything to run from or like anything to fight against. In this one, we had Miss Gillyflower, but we didn't even have. There was not even something. There, I don't know. I feel like there could have been some kind of creatures. You had the the supermodels or whatever, I guess. Yeah. Who were the? But even in the Power of Three, they had the the nurses with like the cube faces. Which made no like sense. Like they kind of threw those in there just to have something. And this or time they didn't even. The they didn't have of anything. With the things. Right. That, yeah. Were creepy that, you know, blue squiggly man. Yeah, yeah blue, three blue squiggly things in people. Um, but yeah, this one didn't even have any. It was just Miss Gillyflower and her leech <laughs> on her chest. Right. Yeah. Well, the, the the models that worked for her were sort of her assault group. Right. You know, when I saw the uh, preview or the promo for this last week, I thought maybe. I thought that Ada was like some kind of monster. monster. See, because, whenever like, we watched it, the trailer for the season, I felt the same thing. Right. I thought that she was going to be part of this, that she was some something that had gone wrong. And she, yeah. So I thought, um, because in the promo, they, they show the part of her, like when she's yelling at, at her mom. Yeah. Um, and, and so they show her, she's all angry and she's storming towards the camera. So I thought, oh, that's, that's going to be like the creepy crimson horror monster. Right, you know, is this woman with the, who, with these eyes, you know? So, but no, she turned out to be a really sweet lady. <laughs> one of the big, I, I feel like one of the big problems to um, to Doctor Who, if there is a, a problem, so to speak, to Doctor Who, it's that there's sort of an expectation of a monster. There's an expectation that there has to be a conflict in every episode. Um, you know, this the show is uh, so amazing. Because it doesn't have to be about that. Sometimes it's about exploration. Sometimes it's about science. Having a monster is good. Having a villain is good. But it's not necessary. Right. Well, I will say... Yeah. I will say I do love the fact that all the episodes are different. And and even that seasons can be different. And, you know, you they change... You know, companions. And they even change the main... Who plays the main character. I mean, that's brilliant. I love that stuff. Sure. But uh, that gives you room to say, okay, well, I like this kind of stuff better than I like that kind of stuff. Right. Right. And I guess for me, it's like this episode wasn't my kind of stuff that I liked. I guess. I mean, that's... Yeah. You know what I mean? I, you know, yeah, I, sure. I, it's, like, um, it's like on Saturday Night Live, Lauren Michaels would say... To, um, he goes, the, the, the genius about our show is like, well, if you didn't like that sketch, well, just yeah. wait a minute, because something totally different's coming up. Right. You might like that. 
<laughs> well, and that's um, Doctor Who week to week. That's that's really what it is. If you don't like yeah. this episode, hey, next week we've got the Cybermen. You know, if you don't like the Cybermen, well, the week after that we've got you know. We've got the Daleks. Don't like the Daleks. Hey, for a season finale, we've decided uh, let's just go ahead and, um, you know, have Time Lords. You're okay. Yeah. You're good. <laughs> well done. Um, I will say, ironically, this one made me like Hyde more. <laughs> you mentioned It made that. me look back and go, you know what? That one wasn't so bad. <laughs> I, I really don't. I, I liked the pacing of this episode. I liked where it all ended up. Um, I, I know a lot of people seem to have... There were a lot of complaints people had about, uh, you know, their, the monsters weren't good enough. Or, like, that rocket would have burned off their face. My favorite review I read online was a guy that said, <laughs> that rocket would have burnt off their face. First thing, dude, if that's what you have a problem with with this show, you've got a problem. Yes. Yeah. Because you've got a two-hearted, regenerating alien from another planet who travels through time and space in a blue police box. If you're willing to accept any of that sentence I just said, you're going to accept Rocket didn't blow their face off. <laughs> but that, well, and all the other things in this episode, you have a, a, a potato man, you have a lizard woman from the dawn of time and her wife. Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah, come on, lighten up. <laughs> <laughs> There, there was a big argument I read online about people saying, well, you know, it doesn't make sense that you would have a character, or you would have these three characters who could naturally investigate this thing without the Doctor. Like, it was from uh, Madame Bastra's past. Why did the yeah. Doctor even need to be involved? Right. That's a pretty, yeah, good, that's I a pretty mean, good point. But it's Doctor Who. Yeah. What do you think the Doctor had to be involved? Well, he, yeah, it'd be, it wouldn't be Doctor Who if he wasn't involved somehow. Right. Uh, and I like sometimes that you didn't see him right away. Well, right. And sometimes it's even, um, so I, I even like the episodes too where, and this was almost kind of one of those, but where it's not even like the Doctor wants to investigate. They just accidentally show up there and then they get sort of entangled into something. Right. Um, and that's sort of what happened in like yes. uh, example like this the Satan pit or whatever right. you know they got stuck there on that he place didn't and then they were there. like well now we're, we have to <laughs> a TARDIS took him um, there yeah Why so um, but in this one they you know they, they want to investigate right. I don't something I, you know I don't know what it was I, it was a good episode don't get me wrong it was good something just seemed off about it um, I don't know what it was something was just off something was just off huh it, one weird example is like there's the whole part where Miss Gillyflower falls down the whatever she falls down the stairs or falls down the shaft right and it just seemed out of place for the doctor to go ooh ouch you know what I mean that seemed kind of weird you know have you noticed though he's been more and more What's the word? Not not crass, but just he's been a little more cavalier about the doctor's been a little more violent. He's been a little more sexual. He's been uh -huh. a little more. I, they're really kind of. It's yes, it's a kids show, but you know they're really kind of picking it up and saying, okay, well, but it can also be. Well, I feel like I feel like in episodes past, if somebody were to fall down a chute, even if it was the bad guy, you know, there would have been some dramatic music, and you would have seen her falling like no, and then you know what I mean. And then yeah. it just would have been it would have been more dramatic, but it's, it's like, like, well, yeah. I mean, it's the bad guy. We all wanted her to fall, and but it even you yeah. know, it's like uh, I don't know. I I see what the you're real, saying, but I, I yeah, it's like it's the big climax, and it's it's like all of a sudden it's an '80s movie, and the doctor's like, ooh, ouch. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like they had actually been all that serious up until then. I know this this, right. this episode was really You funny. have a point there, yeah. And I, I like that it was funny. You know, um, Journey to the Center of the TARDIS was very serious. Right. And this was this was so much fun. Very serious. Right. I don't know. This this to me felt a little more like some of the fun, lighthearted episodes they do that starts out kind of creepy but ends up being sort of actiony. Yeah. I don't know. I just I, I guess I took it differently. Well, uh, here's what I have to say. I expected more from the title, The Crimson Horror. Right. Um, I think that that might be what it might be wrong with this episode. 
the Crimson Horror gives me pictures in my head of what of and more you know and this was not even what I pictured would happen yeah um you know I didn't think it was just some lady preserving people and then Correct. she was gonna shoot off a rocket you know what I mean I thought I was thinking the Crimson Horror okay there's gonna be some kind of red goopy monster or something or I don't know right. but you know what I mean yeah it definitely it definitely didn't sell itself Exactly. It it doesn't it doesn't do what it said on the tin. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, um, here, let me see. Let me find something I did like about this episode. Okay. <laughs> that would be helpful. Uh, <laughs> I guess I should I liked, find something I, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. I liked the northern accents they did. Those were hilarious. Oh yeah, those. Were, I love that. And I love that because Nine had a northern accent, which was great. Lots of planets. Sort of to, to to think about that. Sort of play back to that. Um, we got the doctor did it, and then Claire did it. And when they were talking with Skelly Flyer in the beginning, uh, I did like the style of the thing that they did, where they, where he went, he did go back and he, when he told, you know, what had happened, and it was kind of in this sepia tone, with like, you know, crackles, right, like it was really like an cool, old movie. Like that was kind of cool, a cool effect. I almost wish though it had been done like it actually was a film strip, and the doctor wasn't telling it; they, it was Madame Mastra and Jenny watching it. Mm-hmm. Like, I think it it's a cool idea, but, like, he could have just told her in a sentence or two. Right. Which is, which, again, I thought it would have been better to actually see it from there. You know what I mean? I like, I like to, yeah. I like the episode to open and, like, the doctor and, or the TARDIS appears and the doctor gets out and he goes, okay. <laughs> you know. What do we got for us We did week? see this, but we didn't see it till like, halfway through the episode. Right. I feel right. like, though, if we had that... You'd complain that, like, man, it feels so linear, and, like, why can't the doctor, why can't it start in the middle of the story? I wouldn't say that. You <laughs> would. You're like, I really love hey, those look, I don't just episodes. look for everything to argue against. <laughs> <laughs> why, can't, um, why can't it start, like, where the doctor's already been turned into a monster, and, like, it's these other people that have to save him, and you don't see him for 20 minutes. I totally want to not see him for 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you. I know, right? <laughs> I'm encouraging. Uh, I liked. I liked. See, I liked the coroner. He was really proud of. Like he'd come up with the crimson horror. He was like, really proud of it. <laughs> the crimson horror. <laughs> he was like, oh, the crimson horror. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, you think it's? Yeah, you you're gonna. You're gonna like it. It's the crimson uh, horror. Well, it's like it was funny because even though it was, it was out of order. But the way you saw it, it was the third time he said it, he said it to the doctor, and the doctor goes, oh, that's great, I love that, the Crimson Horror. <laughs> so he was, it was almost like a, he kept trying to get people to like it. But the doctor if you think it. about it, yeah, because the doctor, well, now that you think about it, because it's out of order, he said it to the doctor first, so the, then the doctor showed his, that he really liked it. And then, <laughs> and then, so then he kept trying to get other people to have the same reaction, and they were like, okay. <laughs> it just didn't happen. No, it didn't happen for him. The Crimson Horror? No. Oh, no, crimson no. Horror. He's like, be serious. Somebody has died. <laughs> it was the dude's brother, too. Yeah. <laughs> the Crimson Horror. Um, like Zoidberg. <laughs> oh, the Crimson Horror. <laughs> you want the Crimson Horror, perhaps? Maybe? 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 Um... I liked the speaking of Zoidberg, that thing that uh, Mr. Sweet kind of looked like a little baby Zoidberg. <laughs> oh my god, he looked like a little baby Zoidberg. Well, he had little claws. And... He was so adorable. Oh, I know what I'm making this week. I'm making a graphic. <laughs> I have it all planned <laughs> out. <laughs> I figure it's okay. It's um, gonna be awesome. Uh, but then, like when she fell, and then he, and then he was like crawling away. He was like, "I'm out of here." <laughs> <laughs> That was kind of funny. Um, okay, so, but the one thing we do get about this episode is at the very end, and I did like this because it's sort of, it sets up the next episode, but it's also sort of moves kind of, the, moves the plot along. Sure. And it's kind of a big, kind of a big, kind of a twist or whatever at the end. Um, she gets home and she sees, on the computer, she sees these pictures of herself 
one from Hyde and one from Cold War. Um, and apparently, her the kids that she she watches have been looking online and they've seen these pictures of her. Um, <laughs> yeah, which I thought was kind of funny because. At the beginning of the season, the Doctor had been deleting himself from every database ever, and then he I guess he got lazy because... Well, he deleted himself? Well, that doesn't mean that he deleted her. He didn't know to delete But her. in the pictures, it was both of them, because then the kids go, which I thought was the best part, was Is the kids your... go, and that guy looks like your boyfriend, <laughs> which either they assume she's he's her boyfriend, or she's told them that, oh, him, he's, uh, he's my boyfriend. <laughs> Well, they were. I think they were just teasing with her, like, which cracks me up. Oh, yeah. Oh, your boyfriend. Hmm. Yeah. Well, and then the big thing is she sees. Then she sees the picture of Victoria and Clara. Right. And she's like, "Wait a minute." I wasn't you in. Know, I, I was in London. I was in. I was in Yorkshire. I wasn't in London. Right. At that time. Right. So she. That's kind of a hum and a wah for her. But then. Hum and a wah. Ha ha A boom. <laughs> but but then, yes. but then the kids are like, "Oh, can we go on the on the tar- time machine?" And she's like, "Wait, wait, wait no, no, wait." Um, and so because that sets up the next one. Um, right. I'm I'm not I'm not going to point out the obvious mistake with this. Um, right. First and foremost, they're like, "We'll tell Dad." So, what point in time is it her responsibility to be like? Yeah, it's it's photoshopped. Well, right. Either that is, but yeah, it's photoshopped. Or she tries to tell him like, oh, it's just somebody who looks like me. How is that an acceptable response? Right. Well, then and then they trick her, and then they go, and then she goes, wait a minute, because she sees the other picture, and they go, yeah, you were in Victorian London, and she goes, no, I wasn't. I was in Victorian Yorkshire, <laughs> and they're like, oh ha, gotcha. Um, which is which was funny anyway, but then they're like, okay, so we'll tell dad, and all I could think was, well, so what? Tell him. Yeah. What's is he going to believe you? Right. <laughs> you know, like who cares? Whatever. She was in it. She's with the time traveler. Her boyfriend travels through time, and he'll be like, uh, okay. <laughs> He'd be like, you're grounded. So, <laughs> what kind of game are you kids playing then? <laughs> yeah. Is it a pretend? Uh, do we need to have the talk about drugs? <laughs> Which, <laughs> oh, drugs. <laughs> drugs are bad. Know, I don't know what yeah, they are. I don't know why all of a sudden I was like, <laughs> okay. Sad. Yeah. <laughs> well, so yeah, so that's the big, that was sort of the big twist at the end of this one, is this whole thing. Dun, that now, dun, she has to, now she has to take these kids uh, right. on this magical thing. mystery tour. So, yeah. <laughs> awesome. So, yeah. Oh, well, so, okay, so we definitely have different opinions on this episode. Yeah. <laughs> For no apparent reason other than I liked it and you disliked it. Awesome. Good well, call. yeah, I mean, I mean it, again, again, I liked it, okay? I mean, it's right. Doctor Who. I liked it. It was fun. It yes. Was, it was entertaining. But as a as a podcaster and a reviewer, I have to, I have to pick one. I have mm-hmm. to say, you know, this was the one I didn't like. So far this season, that the most I didn't like. So, I don't know. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. Um, well. Um, cool. Cool. Coolio. You know what that brings us to? <laughs> what? I. I. I, I don't want to say it because I'm gonna get so excited. Okay, I'll say it. Here we okay. go. It's, it's gonna be a big build up. You ready? Okay. Okay. Oh. That promo. Oh my god, that promo! Oh. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm oh. excited. Oh my god. I am super excited. Who doesn't love the Cybermen? Who I mean, doesn't? Really? Yeah, I mean, really. Who? I mean, somebody maybe doesn't, but they're dumb. dumb. Right. <laughs> um, oh, I am so excited for this episode. Um... I think it's kind of funny that they're having a, a Cyberman episode as the uh, second to last episode. Again, they're doing that again because that's what happened last season. I think that's kind of funny. Oh, yeah, it was, wasn't it? Yeah, it was closing time. Yeah. 
I always forget Closing Time was a Cyberman episode. Because it doesn't feel like it. Well, yeah, you just think of it as a Craig episode. Right. But it's a, it's a you but know, see, it was a Cyberman episode. This is, this isn't, from everything we've read online, this isn't going to be the Cybermen from the Ultimate Universe. Well, thank goodness. <laughs> this is the true-to-life Cybermen of this of this universe. Right. Like, this I think they big, were from, yeah, deal. they're from Mondas, I think is what they're name of the right. planet something about yeah I don't I, I haven't well, I haven't gotten to that part in my classic who watch yet but they you know there's I've read up on the Cybermen and there's yeah there's two t- kinds of Cybermen so I think we're yes. officially we're officially done with the what what they're called Pete's World Cybermen oh or the Pete's the World. Cybus Cybus Industry Cybermen which is good I thought that was kind of a now, I, at first, I didn't know. I just thought, "Oh, the Cybermen!" Right. They just kept hanging around, and right. But then it like, was like, "Oh, okay." You know, I heard like, "Oh, no, these are like from an alternate reality." That's not who the Cybermen are. They're just like they look right. exactly. I thought that was kind of a weird thing to do once I heard that they'd done that. I was like, "Okay, so you're making right. guys that are called Cybermen and they look exactly like the Cybermen, but they're they're, they're not, not Cybermen. The, yeah. They're not the Cybermen because they're well, because they're from an alternate universe. But I mean, remember what the, the doctor said? I've seen this happen before. Right. You know, yeah. Which was kind of so a, it's, yeah. But it was exactly the same. Which, that's the weird part. <laughs> well, not exactly, but yeah. Right. Uh, one thing I hear. One thing I hear about this the, that's cool is that they're going to be fast. That's going to be scary. Um, they're going. They're not going to be slow anymore. Which is good. I mean, it's it's good that they're going to be true to form monsters. Well, they were the noisiest villains ever. I mean, you could hear them coming a mile away. How do you sneak up on someone? With the ka-chunk, 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 ka-chunk. <laughs> <laughs> Which, do, you, do you have your sneaking mode on? Yeah. <laughs> it's a cyber squad. Cyber go, mufflers. Go into, go into sneaky mode. And then they like flip a switch, and, but then they still go ka chunk, ka chunk. I've seen this box trick before. Yeah. Um, okay, so the promo. Um, yeah. I did. I there's some things I learned about the episode I didn't know that was going to happen. I just thought Cybermen were coming to Earth and they were going to do something. But apparently, there's a whole thing where he takes the kids and Clara to a theme park, the biggest theme park in the universe, which is kind of a cool idea. I like that. Um, and then it's closed down, I'm assuming, right. because of the Cybermen. And, Cybermen. Yeah. Well, the, the big question now that I have is, does that mean that they're not on Earth? I'm assuming not. I'm assuming because... they're... Because... Just, because, well, they're at this theme park where... I mean, he says it's the biggest one in the universe or in the galaxy or whatever. I don't remember what he said. But then they're also like... they're. It looks like they're in some part where it's like a moon thing. It looks like they're floating, right. you know. Like that's an, one of the attractions is they're like on a moon bounce, but it like really looks like the moon, and it's probably like some kind of artificial gravity or something. Mm-hmm. So it looks kind of alien. I'm excited for these sleek looking Cybermen though. They they almost look like they got little bellies hanging out. Yeah, little abs, six packs. <laughs> Well done being fit. Yeah. Well, they also have like the they have the little Iron Man light in the, in the middle of their chest, too, which is kind of neat. <laughs> Iron Man lights. Well, yeah, they do. I just, I, I'm just I'm just imagining them flying through like the air now and the, with know, the the jets like coming Iron out of their Man. hands and their feet. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, maybe they'll have jets coming out of their hands and feet. Ooh. <laughs> Oh, there's a really weird part in this episode. Um, you, you see the doctor, he's got this, like, thing on his face, which we talked about yeah. previously, but um, mm-hmm. we'll get to find out what this is. It's this, like, metal thing. It's got some lights that light up. Mm-hmm. Kind of reminds me of the uh, of the other Cybermen that had the, the, um, the earpieces. You know, everyone had the earpieces. Yeah. It's like this is something that has to do with the Cybermen. It's like that. it's the earpieces this time, but it's the face... Face piece or some whatever. The face piece. Well, maybe um, it's the beginning of a conversion process. Yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking. Something along those lines. But there's a weird part where he, at first, 
when I watched it, it just sounded like he was yelling. <laughs> okay. And then I watched it again. The second time I watched the, the, this episode and I watched the promo, I had the close captions on. And he yells, they're here. Um, <laughs> but the way he yells uh, it, it's weird. Because it, at first it just looked like he was screaming for no right. reason. It looked like he was just like, ah. <laughs> and I was like, what the heck is going to, what is happening? <laughs> the doctor does this so often, too. Yeah. Um, That's good. So that'll be interesting. I don't know what that's going to be about. Um, I well, I don't know, and that's um, there's a lot of mystery about this because when Neil Gaiman was offered, you know, to write this episode, they said make the Cybermen scary again, and he said okay. Yeah, which I, I'm I assuming like they're going to do some different different stuff with them. With good, it's about time. Let's, well, let's get a that's little the bit thing is like with the angels, you know, they the angels just had, were one trick pony for. The first episode, they're just like, oh, well, they touch you, they send you back to whatever. And then right. they when they came back, it was like this whole this, this whole thing, you know, and the image of an angel and all that stuff. They had new abilities. It was like, oh, those, those other ones were just stragglers. These are the big bad, you know, these are the ones. Right. And so it'll be good to see the Cybermen actually have something new that, that maybe they can do or something. You know, yeah. Right. I'm I am very excited for this episode. I, Me too. This is my second highly anticipated episode. Second. Uh huh. Well, the first was Journey of the Center of the Tardis, and it did not uh, did not disappoint. So. <laughs> no, it did not. Well, I'm I'm very excited for the last episode. Well, that, I'm always excited for the finale, so I don't really <laughs> I don't really count that in my most anticipated. Usually the finale, <laughs> and then the fiftieth anniversary a little later. Yeah, that's. Later I mean, on. this is going to be great. We're just getting down to the wire, to though. There's only two left, so it's getting, it's getting really sad. Well, they say they're going to explain Clara by the end, so okay. that'll be good too. Yeah. Yeah. Finally, get some um, uh-huh. some closure on the mystery. Um, the final the the final thing I had about this promo is there's a line. I, I think it's at the very end. The guy says. Something about the doctor being the savior of the Cybermen. You have saved the Cybermen race, yeah. I thought that was really interesting because we started this season off with him saving the Daleks. <laughs> they were like, "Save we did, us, save we? us," you know. Um, <laughs> and then now he's—I guess he's the savior of the Cybermen, which I think that's hilarious. That it's like, for some reason, he's helping them. <laughs> Wasn't something. it just like? two seasons ago that the Daleks and the Cybermen all ganged up on the Doctor. Yeah. And they were like, listen, bitch, you have definitely got some problems. <laughs> You're going Universe in the box. Is in danger. <laughs> it's your fault. We're gonna kill you now. <laughs> no, not even kill him. Trap him in a box. <laughs> Trap him in a box. Uh, <laughs> a forever box. <laughs> oh. You will never escape the forever box. Yeah. So, yep, I'm excited. Right on. I, I am too. This was a man, such a good season. Yeah. It, I, this, I don't know if it's because this is the first season I've been watching week to week, but right. This is my favorite season. I mean, it's been the best this season. I feel like it's been just awesome. Yes, yeah. I agree. Hey, we agree. Well, <laughs> <laughs> That's considering at the beginning of this uh, this whole thing we disagreed, so that's good. We made some we made some real good progress here today. <laughs> we did, and one day, one day, we might uh, make amends. I look forward to that day, sir. Yeah, we act, <laughs> we act like we disagree all the time. We really don't. <laughs> it was just like this and an episode of Lost. That's it. Yeah. We usually like no. we usually gabbin about the whole time about how we both loved it so much. <laughs> you no, know, my uh, favorite episode of my favorite secret about the the episode on Lost was uh, that Hurley went and used the toilet paper. No, my favorite secret was he didn't know what was behind that bush. <laughs> uh, can't be friends. Can't no. be friends. For all of you out there who haven't watched Lost, for the love of God, go watch Lost. Oh my it's God, number it's, the, it's the best. Four on my list of best sci-fi shows of all time. 
It's the best. I think I'm going to rewatch it this summer. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> I've already rewatched uh, Battlestar Galactica once, so I think I got to go back and rewatch Lost now. Yeah, I think I'm going to do. I'm going to do that this summer. Well, all right. We're well, we're just rambling fringe. now. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, hey, everybody, um, you Thanks have been for... listening to a podcast. Yes, and thank you for doing that. Yeah, it's good you spend your time with us here. You know, if you didn't, well, we'd just be talking to no one. Yeah. That would be sad. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, this is Matt from the Vortex. Yeah, and this is Taylor. And uh, you've just been punked. I mean, uh, <laughs> you uh, <Burn>! listened. <laughs> I don't know. I, it's I got. I have no sign on or sign off here. Yeah, we should really come up with something. We need to. We should. Hey, if you would like, if you have an idea for a sign off, let us know. <laughs> you've just been podcasted. <laughs> you've just been vortexed. Vortexed. Bye, everyone. Bye. Vortex.